first sign of trouble and you won't know what's hit you. These belong to a boy there can be no excuse to shield. Don't even think about saying a word, because you know what I'm after. Welcome back. Helpful information coming in all the time on many of our cases tonight. We have new witnesses in the case of Connie and Janice Sheridan. Overwhelmed with calls we have been about the rape on a train. Some of those calls tying in possible names of attackers with the ring and the watch. And some interesting developments as well on the disappearance of Stephen Vara. Let's go first to the double murder in the Fens. The knife attack on Connie Sheridan and her daughter Jan in the early part of January. Jan? Jan? Paul Sheridan, you said, uh, uh, Paul Chapman, you said uh, earlier that one of the lines of inquiry you were looking at was that this was a sex offence. Now, what sort of cause has that prompted? It's prompted lots and lots of calls where we, we've been given the names yeah. of people who've either got previous convictions yeah. for sexual, for sexual offences or their names of people who are, they've, they've been behaving strangely and it is very, very encouraging. There are lots and lots of new leads for us as a result of this information that's coming tonight. And you are still looking for that sort of call, anybody who may have acted strangely in that area? We're still looking for that January. information and we've still got calls coming in as we speak. Uh, now, you were trying to find anybody who knew Connie and, and Jan throughout their lives, really, just to find out more about them. How successful has that yes, been? Yes, we were. It's been very successful. Um, most importantly, we've got people ringing in who worked with Janice during the early 90s up until 95 when she stopped work because and of a, a back problem. And a silver and grey car that was seen by their house, anything on that? Phenomenal response, very, very heartening. There are some, there's some new information coming in, giving details of vehicles in the Norfolk, Cambridge area. These are vehicles that have not previously come into the inquiry. Thanks, Paul Chapman, thank you. Well, a single call would have been enough for our next case. A call from someone on the fringes, maybe, of a gang which terrorised a security guard and hijacked a van load of cash. Securicor is so concerned about the threats of violence that they offer a £50,000 reward. Oh, sorry about that, mate. You all right, then? Yeah? No, it's a bit shook up. Yeah? You get in the back of the van and tell us you're cold. Right, listen, mate. You listening? Remember what I said, yeah? Let's be about it. It'll be the last thing you ever do, understand? Well, Tony Crofts, Janet, you've had quite a few calls, haven't you? We have, yes. We've had uh, over 60 in the studio, another 20 to Scotland Yard. Mm. Uh, very pleased. We've identified the driver of the Vauxhall that you saw in the film. That's good. He's come forward he and has. he's been eliminated, obviously. He's just yes. an innocent passerby. Now, you've got a list here of all the names that have been mentioned, um, matching mm -hmm. them with, uh, with the, uh, the, the main thug in the, in the film, which mm. was the only one we could identify, really, wasn't it? Yes, correct, yes. Unfortunately, we haven't had any witnesses as such through yet. But uh, these names are very helpful, and uh, there are officers working on it as we speak. But none duplicated, I see. At this time, no, no. Now, you want more information on the Fiesta that was used? Yes, there's been a few suggestions about it being perhaps an ex British telecom van and the like, but uh, in particular, I'd emphasize that I'm interested in where it has been. Um, we didn't mention it in the earlier program, but there may have been some damage after the 11th, and uh, if it was taken to your repair shop where you're asked to paint the signs on the side. I'm very interested to hear from you. And also there's a £50,000 reward, so don't forget that. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first of all, on that Southampton robbery, we've had a definite name from somebody who is extremely credible, and we're very optimistic. Peter Drury for the assault on a female. Well, we've had a particular clue that we think will give us a definite link to him. Then moving on to Gary Ashley, assault in connection with some indecent assaults. Well. Ashton under line, Manchester and Maidstone have been mentioned as possible sightings. And then lastly, Chris Saunders here is very excited about Tangney. Over 40 calls there, some putting him in the area of Ford Open Prison where it's thought he was earlier living rough, but now, just in the last few minutes, Huddersfield has been mentioned. Now, there are some cases you don't expect so many calls on, and Stephen Vara's death is one of them. The problem is that he was a bit of a loner, and whatever happened to him took place about five years ago. For some unknown reason, Stephen left his home on Humberside and started walking south. Do you want to live? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as long as it's not a problem. Well, that was the last sighting before what were thought to be Stephen's remains were found lying in a ditch. Well, John Mabbott, how have the calls been going this evening? Well, we've been having a, a steady stream of calls, um, some very interesting calls that tend to point us towards the, the identity of the anon anonymous caller. Now, this was the one who claimed that he'd, he'd picked up uh, 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 Stephen in Grimsthorpe. Grimsthorpe. That's right. And, and one interesting call 
from a caller who talks about a murder, somebody who'd confessed to a murder and leaving a murder of a hitchhiker and uh, the leaving of the body in a ditch. I'm very interested in that call indeed. Right, but you're not going to close the book on Absolutely that one. Absolutely I mean, not. You want as many calls well, as possible. For the sake to come of the in. family, we need as many calls as we can. Well, let's hope it's a success. Thank you. Thanks. Next to the West Midlands and to the Ladbrokes betting shop robbery, a whole host of calls suggesting various locations for this, this guy, but still ring in if you have any ideas. And then the Allerton ceiling robberies. Remember that baseball cap? Two callers have suggested the same name for the owner of that France 98 cap. Then the Camden attempted murder. Would you believe we've actually had an eyewitness come forward this evening? So it's obviously very exciting news. And the Dollis Hill robbery, uh, lots of names suggested, and several other incidents involving that unusual imitation gun have come to light. And finally, Griselda Williamson. One man said he'd interviewed her for a job as a care assistant, so that can only be good news. We'd hope for around 400 calls in our next case. Uh, we've got a fair number of them already. We've been trying to trace every passenger on a train one Sunday night anywhere between Newcastle and Bristol. Part way through the journey, a student was hustled into a lavatory and raped. Don't even think about saying a word, because you know what will happen. It was Sunday, February the 21st, and Danny Snee, you've just told me the response has been amazing. Why? It's absolutely amazing. I mean, the, the number of calls both to the studio and the incident room, uh, suggesting names, tying them in with the, the watch and the ring. Now, this, this ring, the rapist is wearing, or at least this is a very similar one, and a, a very similar watch. You're saying people are coming up with names of people who've got this sort of combination? Exactly, yeah. Um, we're going to have a very, very busy incident room as a result of all the information that's coming. Now, have you found anyone else who might have been raped by him? Because there is a suspicion that he hasn't just done this once. He might have done it before. Yeah, certainly this evening in the studio, we've had one call uh, from a girl saying she was raped by somebody who fits the description of the EFIT. And obviously, we will be contacting her as a priority. How many really important calls have you got, or, or calls that really look worth following up? The vast majority need following up because most of them are actually suggesting names. So, as, like I said before, we're going to be very, very busy. Okay, well, let's hope it goes well. Thank you. Thank you. What? Well, we'll be taking calls here for a few more minutes, but after that, you'll find the numbers on CFAX, page 621. You can email us at crimewatchuk at the BBC, and on any case, call Crime Stoppers anonymously if you want on 0800 treble 5 treble 1. If you've been a victim and you'd like to talk to someone at Victim Support, they'll be there until 2 in the morning, and the number is 0845 30 30 900. Next month's Crime Watch is on Tuesday, April the 20th. Join us then. And with Crime Watch working on these cases, with the crime weight falling, and thousands of people calling to help right now. They don't have nightmares. Do sleep well. Good night. Mm, good night.